Hey guys, welcome back. On this episode of Pro Noob RC, we uh, lied to you from the last one. We haven't taken the truck outside yet. We're still working on it, so um, we, we kind of want to get everything finished up. The parts ended up getting finished by Jesse on his Ender 3 in solid 100% PLA. We had just finished painting him up, slapped some red in there and some matte black on the outside like we do everything. And now this is the kit from Night Customs you get on my mini factory that actually, uh, my mini factory, is it my mini factory? Yeah, my mini factory that raises the front center differential 13 millimeters up inside the, like closer to the frame rail to give you a lot more clearance in the middle as you can see. The truck is a little bit low in the middle and this approach angle is rather steep. So he's come up with this new approach angle. This front piece goes on, bumper mount goes through here. These two front screws are now for the bottom of your front uh, lower hinge pin brace up there. And then this guy runs off the back side of it like so and then runs all the way back into the mounts on the skid plate, which is the out of piece right here. So we're gonna take this all apart. The instructions are easy. You can find them in the description when you buy the file from Night Customs on My Mini Factory. These are the new standoff mounts and they replace these guys right here behind the shock, if you can see that bigger piece there. And that's gonna raise everything up, so pretty simple. You're going to want to move the steering uh, link to the bottom of here. You need to raise the servo to the top. You need to take it out and refinagle it and put the servo on top of the chassis plate instead of inside because everything's going to come up a lot closer in front and you need the room for everything to clear. As you can see, the steering link and the servo in there will not clear right now um, if we did not make the modification to raise the servo up. So it's a little bit of uh, knickknackery and bump it around, but. Uh, we're gonna get at it, so. Simple enough, it's best to start. Oh, sorry, forgot to mention these really nice inner front fenders with the Night Customs logo, a little bit of honeycomb um, design to go in there that kind of matches the headlights and the grill, so it's a very nice piece. And those guys wrap in right around here, all nice and pretty, so. We got a bit of uh, tearing apart to do, and we'll get those in. What the heck is that? He just hammered it on. Oh my goodness. Wow. Sure yeah, watch out for that. Uh, that's not going to last long. I'm going to have to. Uh, that's brutal. Wow. Wow. Jeez. Come on, guys. Yeah, all the corners are peeled right up. They just put it on and sent it with an impact. <laughs> Jeez, you guys. Made America. Impacts. You're going to want to get this servo mount off as soon as you can, so I would start with the back plate here. Another thing is it's going to improve this front drive shaft angle. It is pretty steep. It's not extreme. It is a CBD dry shaft, so you know it can handle that angle all day long, but bringing it down will actually make the drive line a little bit smoother. The, the more flat and straight your dry shaft is, the better, of course, right? So, And that's another tip we gotta do is cut this uh, spacer in the middle of the dry shaft, five millimeters, and maybe shave a little bit of plastic. But I think if we shave that five millimeter, the dry shaft can tap all the way out in there and come down nice, so. Did they lock tight it? You don't think so? Hate it when you're right. No Loctite. Make sure you guys Loctite these all. Go through them, do them all on the truck. That should be done. So I just pulled out the CBD axle because the pin came out, obviously, because it was just easier to take it all because I bastardized the wheel putting it together. But, um, 
bearing on the outside, bearing on the inside, just pay attention, those don't fall out. And just make sure that they're there when you put it back together, else you're gonna run into problems real quick. Yeah, that's pretty much out. I did want to get this servo out. I was hoping to get the dry shaft out, but that dry shaft ain't coming out until we remove this front dry shaft housing or differential housing, which is going to be these four screws bop, 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 right on top. So I'm going to sit the weight of the truck down here. I'm just going to leave the shocks and everything hooked up. It's nice and supported right on that diff, right? So I'm not going to hurt nothing. And then I'm just going to pop these out. Don't take out the ones in the front. Those are for your steering rack and you'll drop that out. That's unnecessary. This guy needs five mils. So this guy needs five millimeters. Take it off of it. Um, I think, uh, Jesse, you want to go throw that in the lathe and just pull it down five mil? Okay. Jesse's gonna go spin that down on the lathe, and um, I'll flip the servo to the top. Luckily, we're changing out this receiver to a Spectrum SR. 315, so we can run it with our rugged DX5 radio. Jess and I both have them, fantastic radios, very happy with them. Very nice radio box, actually there's a nice rubber gasket in there. It's not expecting that. Very nice tiny receiver. It's a four channel too, I'm gonna steal that for something else because I'm putting a Spectrum in here, so. Remember, don't over tighten your servos. It puts undue stress and binding on them. A premature failure. I'll run them down with this, back them up a little bit, then I'll come in and snug these guys up just where I want them with a hand screwdriver. This part was nice and thread locked, so with the dry shafts weren't, so we gotta make sure we go back and we do all the dry shafts. There's a pin inside. You want to make sure this pin and this pin are clocked the same. Some applications ask them to be clocked sideways. I've only heard of that. I've never seen that. Everything I've ever come across always asks the pins to be clocked the same. So I'm going to keep doing it that way until somebody says differently. Or okay, well. the grease is too thin. It's not. It's not nice grease. I feel like to use a good waterproof, a little bit heavier, stickier marine grease. And uh, there's... Like a high point pinion angle like this is, requires a lot of... Is that a high point? It's not a high point. But it's just a bevel cut and it's small. It needs a lot of grease being that small. You want to add as much life as you can in there. So I'm just gonna load and just keep working this so I make sure it's where I want it. But it was nice to see that it was greased. We have opened up a lot of unnamed brand vehicles that had no grease. Okay, so after a little bit of visual inspection, we found out it was greased. We put some more in there, a little bit of marine grease on there, it'll look good. Do mm -hmm. you want to run faster, Jesse? Yes. Do you want to see better at night? Yes. <laughs> you want your, you want the hair on your skin to glow? <laughs> I would like just hair on my skin. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to pull off one side, we're going to build out the one side to show you the difference. One side versus the other. So these are the parts Jesse printed. You can obviously see right there. 
it's about a half inch difference, and that's going to give us a lot more um, steel realism. So. Parts like this, if you're buying the files, you want to set them up. I know he has recommended settings like three walls or something like that, or other people do. I might be mixing it up. We just go 100% infill. It takes longer to print the part, but you know it's going to hold up. So. Boom. There we go. Looking pretty cool. You gonna fit down in there? So then, yeah, we got these mount pieces that go down in there, nice and easy cheesy. Okay, so we want to make sure we line up that pin like we're talking the dry shot. Pin is right there. See, up and down. Let me make sure we line that up with pin on this dude. Let's put this together the right way, like so. Simple enough. This guy, remember, needs to go in. For the bolts, you have to put the dry shaft in. If not, no good. Won't fit. I didn't even need to turn the housing, it just tucked it right in, so that's nice. It gets messy when you cut up the end of that shaft. Dude. So that's screwing into the new mount now. Yeah, this is screwing into the new mount, bringing that differential up. Okay. It's in. Dry shaft's not bound. You want to make sure it's good. A little bit of schlop. See, it's a little tight. Everything's good. Steering is clear. Runs beautifully up and down in the center, right there. Nice and ooh, so nice and tight in there. James does fantastic work at Night Customs. Like just beautiful stuff. Beautiful, beautiful builds. Okay, so we got the upper mounts up here reattach the diff with the M3 by 14 millimeter screws. Um, I'm sorry, I just went and reorganized all the hardware that's dumped out. Like I said, most of it's all the same size, just a couple variances, so. Um, yeah, so let's fire these hinge pins back in the bottom. I also moved that steering pivot ball to the bottom side there, where it's supposed to be, so. Remember to put these guys back inside your differential. Put your axle in, actually, before you put your hinge pin in. So doing this upgrade, you don't want to run anything larger than a four inch tire um, with the body, it'll start rubbing and stuff. This is going to lower down the truck just a little bit in the front, but it is going to lift up this front skid plate a lot and it gives it a better approach angle for getting over things. So uh, to me, it's a win-win mod. Oh, hopefully to put the shaft back in. Pin that. Fancy little hinge pin brace here, keeps those guys from ripping apart. And then, let's start with the rear piece. Everything's hooked up, we're good. Just gotta mess with the shocks a little bit. This guy's gonna slide in there. And like, if you see how nice and tight the night uh, customs parts fit, they're just you know, amazing stuff. Look at that now, nice and smooth. That's, that's just awesome. Love that down there. As soon as I seen that print come up on his Instagram, I knew we were buying that. So you guys remember this is a piece that was there before. Very simple, got the job done, but you know, much more different angle. This is a lot lower, smoother. It's just gonna glide over things nice now. So. Put that pin all the way in. Another big grub screw for the other side. Okay, just get our screws in there. Like, look at how nice that fits. You see that? It's simply amazing. Love it. Beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely beautiful. Now this front guy here, got a nice paint up TRD. He gets a little bit of longer screws. He's gonna slide in right here. right there, tuck over top to the longer screws to the front. Look at that. 
That is awesome. Now, remember, there is a rear piece that's gonna tuck into here, and we're gonna push these links back. I just need to kind of go through, test fit this. It seems like it just goes right on, it bolts right through, it goes on super nice. I gotta get shorter links and such. We're gonna come back to that a little bit later, so. I just wanna get the front end done right now for you guys, so. Look at that though, just beautiful piece. The bumper slides through the holes, she bolts in the front, she got a little skid lip to go over the back, everything's nice and smooth. Printed 100% solid PLA, very happy. Now, one thing is the ride height angle of these shocks. I don't know if I'm gonna lower them all the way down. It's not bindy, so I don't know. But the shock's under compression there, so I kind of want to bring them up to the top hole here. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna take out this plate, I'm gonna move them up there and just start with that. And that should get me kind of sitting where I want to be. So naturally, the mod was 13 millimeters and between those two holes, that's probably close to 13 millimeters and that piece we're taking off right here, so. Um, hopefully the shock's gonna clear shock tower coming up. Yep, nice and clean. Nice fit. There we go, I'm liking that a lot better. You know what, I am gonna put a small spacer behind that. I just don't like how tight it's sitting. Okay, I'm just gonna use rubber grommets from some shocks, or I mean from a mounting servo, just to give it a little bit of space behind it. I just don't like how tight that is to the shock tower. There you go. Nice and not bindy. That's it, nice. Okay, I'll rinse and repeat on this side, and uh, pretty much gonna throw the bumper on it, the wheels on it, and we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, I also quickly slapped in the front inner fender wells from also Night Customs on Bank D Maker. Of course, it comes with the whole package you buy. The Y battery tray does drop right in there and fit in there nicely. I just gotta clean up all the wiring on it. But pretty much, there's our new stance. Let's get that body on there. Oh yeah, also from bumper, runs really nicely into that. All nice, looks a lot better down there underneath. All crazy good looking down there. So we gotta do the rear on it tomorrow, but let's get this body drop back on there. There we go. Nice stance on that truck now. That's beauty. Let's get that body tucked in everywhere. Yeah, sitting nice. Truck just sits 100 times better. Before it was sitting a little high in the front, low in the rear because of the extra weight. Now she's bounced out pretty good. It's really nice and level. Okay, well that's going to bring us to the end of part two of this, of getting that Knight Customs front suspension in. Uh, it's been a couple weeks of just grinding away. We still haven't got out to drive the truck yet. Um, yeah, everything uh, is pretty much where we wanted except for that rear skid plate piece. We're going to get that guy and some shorter links for that figured out tomorrow. It's meant to run the gatekeeper rear trailing arm, so I might just try to go over to Eliminator RC tomorrow and pick up a set of those and get those installed up here and I'll have enough uh, links for this top one. So I'm gonna get that piece in to finish the whole under tray tomorrow and a full light kit. Uh, you don't need to see the install of the light kit. We just did one on that um, Jeep uh, JL for Nick's truck there. So if you wanna check out an install video, check that out. We're, not, we're gonna put the same kit into this one. So um, yeah, stay tuned guys. We'll see you on the trail with this guy right away. Uh, you're gonna wanna see that. This guy's a very nice looking truck.